today. I, I appreciate your attendance here. Um, thanks, Kurt. You can hear me and see the screen. Thank you very much now. Um, we're good to go then. Um, what I want to do is just before we get started and get into the presentation, I've got a couple slides. I'm not going to kill everybody with PowerPoint today. I am going to show a demo of the FireEye Helix solution in conjunction with our other solutions. And I'll explain what those other solutions are uh, in a couple of minutes here. Um, so we're not going to be death by PowerPoint today. It's going to be a little bit of that to kind of set the stage. And then we're going to go into a demo and I'm going to show you how we can protect an environment, how we can inform a security operations center. Um, a little bit of housekeeping. We do have people muted as they're coming in. So don't be alarmed if you try to speak and, and don't say anything. I've just done a lot of these webinars and having everybody muted at first is fine. Um, we do have a chat. We have a, you know, if you want to ask a question, please put it in the chat. Kristen is going to pipe in if, if there's a question that's topical to what we're talking about at time. At the time, she'll go ahead and pipe in and then we'll answer that question at is is. If not, if it's not topical or, 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 or prevalent to what we're talking about at that time, we'll kind of address those questions at the end. We have some time at the end for Q&A. Uh, so again, thanks for uh, bearing with us through our technical difficulties there. So uh, just a quick agenda, you know, I'm going to talk about a little bit about who we are for FireEye. Uh, we're going to give you some of the observations that we see from our, um, our current perspective in how we sit in the security operations purview. Um, so some of the eye openers and some statistics from our, our observations in the field. I'll go over FireEye Helix and what that is and how that's supposed to uh, help address some of those challenges in security operations, how that fits into the whole FireEye security suite, and then I'll do a demo of that security suite in action with a live attack and how we can prevent that and or mitigate that. Then finally, like I mentioned before, we'll have some Q&A and follow-up after we're all done here. So if you do have questions, again, for those that are just joining back in, apologize for the technical difficulties. If you do have questions, you can go ahead and throw them into the chat. We'll address them either in line or at the end as, as we pr finish the presentation here. So let's do a little bit of level setting here so and describe who FireEye is. Because if you think about FireEye, uh, the brand, Right, we're well known for having appliances, whether virtual or physical appliances, uh, that do malicious detection, sandboxing, right, quote unquote sandboxing, um, you know, behavioral based detection of threats on the network, on the endpoint, through email, through many different vectors. Uh, we also have tools to help you do malware analysis. We have tools for packet capturing. We have tools for SIM. Uh, we'll talk about all those different tools, but the tool company, so all, the, all those great products, is our FireEye brand. There's also, also a whole other, whole other side of the company, though, that, that really needs to be talked about because this is where we set ourselves apart from the competition. Uh, and that is in our Mandiant Consulting and our iSight Intelligence Services. So Mandiant Consulting, if you haven't heard of them before, uh, they are one of the top tier incident response teams in the world. They respond to a lot of the major high profile breaches that occur. Uh, a lot of the big names that have been breached over the past couple of years, they were bringing in Mandiant to do the response and recovery. We're using that intelligence of responding to those breaches uh, to build some contextual rules, build some contextual intelligence into our products. The other side of that intelligence arm is we actually have a group called iSight Intelligence, which is, uh, we put it, uh, we state it as forward-looking adversarial intelligence. What that really means is we, we have a, a team of people that are like the CIA, they're going out and they're making friends with all the bad guys in these virtual forums and, and virtual hangouts that they're doing, right? We even have people embedded in the countries of origin speaking, speaking the native languages of you know, these foreign threat actors and they're making friends with them and they're finding out what are they doing, who are they targeting, um, you know, why are they doing it, how are they doing it, and we're taking all that actionable intelligence and we're feeding it back into a series of analysts. And so we have PhDs, we have doctorates, we have, we have, we have lots of very intelligent people pouring through all that data, uh, much like the CIA has their field operatives and then they have their, you know, their, their, they're, they're people on the inside doing their analysis of all that. And we produce reports and we produce intelligence and actionable things from all of that uh, data. So 
all of that, the Mandy Consulting, the eyesight intelligence helps inform our FireEye products and that helps build intelligence into what we're doing. So we're not just a products company that does email or endpoint or network security. Uh, we're an intelligence company that does these products as well. So to really uh, talk about where we've been in the news lately, if, if you've heard of what happened with Facebook a couple of weeks ago, where they helped identify uh, some rogue actors creating fake news, quote unquote, right, uh, websites uh, from an Iranian uh, cyber threat team. Um, it was actually FireEye that helped Facebook identify that. And they also helped Google, um, though that's not one of the articles that's listed here, they helped Google uh, identify fake accounts as well uh, within their YouTube and, and, and other uh, you know, Google services uh, and really helped uh, you know, identify who these were, helped attribute these to uh, known Iranian threat groups um, to, that were basically doing what they call disinformation campaigns, right? So spreading fake news with, with the purpose of either creating dissent within the U.S. or uh, influencing you know, the minds of voters, um, all of these things. Uh, so uh, this is a th constantly changing threat landscape as we see with the geopolitical uh, factors here. Um, Facebook is at the uh, at the forefront of this, obviously, and they're leveraging FireEye's expertise, our intelligence, uh, to help them combat this. So if it's good enough for Facebook, it's good enough for everybody, I, I would say. So let's talk about some of the observations that we have from doing these responses, from uh, going in there and, and responding to breaches and, and, and for doing our intelligence and, and working with the uh, you know, large customers like Facebook, Google, uh, et cetera. Uh, the one thing that we do find is that in general, there's still this big lack of visibility. And what does that really lead to? Uh, that leads to the, you know, the fact that uh, an attacker can be in for an on average up to 99 days before that you're discovered that there's been a breach. Uh, and, and I don't have the statistic in here as well, but also about 70% of breaches are disclosed by a third party, meaning you find out about a breach, you find out that you've been breached, not because you know, you, know, you found it out internally, uh, you found out about it because you know, it ended up in the Wall Street Journal or it ended up on, uh, you know, in the local news. We also found that there was way too many tools being utilized by these by these companies. And now these are major companies that we're responding to breaches on. So, but we found that on average, about 85 tools, different security tools, are being used by companies. Sometimes you know, the network guys had their own security tools, and the security guys had their own security tools, and they were doing the same function. And uh, unfortunately, they didn't even realize that they were both using you know two types of the same set of tools. And what that really leads to is, is just too many alerts, uh, 10,000 alerts uh, occurring daily for an average company. Uh, that's just simply too much. Uh, it depends on how big you're, you're staffed. Uh, you may not even have any security analysts on staff, right? You might have you know, three guys that are your quote unquote IT guys, and one of them might be in charge of security, right? And you know, for them to get you know, even a, a one-tenth of that many alerts a day uh, is just too much for them to handle. And the reason why it's so, so tough for them to handle is because on average, it takes about 20 minutes just to triage a single alert. Uh, and that's just a triage. What, what I mean by triaging an alert, meaning you take a look at the alert, you determine whether it's you know, low, medium, or high on the criticality stand, standpoint, whether I need to address it right now or whether I need to address it later. Uh, it takes on average 20 minutes for somebody just to determine whether this is something they should look at. So if you do the math, you're right, 10,000 times 20 minutes equals not enough time in the day to handle all the alerts, which leads to the lack of visibility. And then lack of context. So once you find out that you've been breached, how long does it take for you to uh, respond to that, to, to kick the bad guy out, right? On average, we found it's been about 32 days. Now, the good news is all these numbers are trending down. The bad news is that's still way too long, right? 131 days from the time a guy enters your environment to the time you can kick him out is way too long for somebody to be spending in your environment with, with access to potentially all your sensitive data. And all of that leads to the final number, which is the, the average cost of a breach is about $4 million. Now that's not, I like the joke, but that's not our mandate consulting fees of the response. You know, ours is only a tiny little fraction of that. 
Um, what that is, is that's the loss of goodwill, the loss, the loss of revenue, the loss of uh, maybe downtime if you're, if you were impacted in that way. Um, all of those different things can take into account, you know, the, the total cost of a breach. And so what is our Helix solution meant to do, right? It's a security operations platform, and it's really here to help answer three important questions with regards to security operations. First and foremost, what's going on in your environment? In other words, do you have the visibility you need to make the you know, decisions that you need to do about what's going on in your environment? Number two, how important is what's going on in your environment? So do you have context so you could prioritize threats and act effectively? And then number three, where should you focus your limited resources, right? So do you have everything optimized and are you efficient enough to take advantage of you know, your one guy that might be a security guy, right, as I mentioned before? And so our platform is designed with these required capabilities in mind, right? We want to be able to consolidate our network, all of our security tools into a single platform. I like to use the overused term of the single pane of glass, right? A lot of people want that idea of single pane of glass to manage everything, right? Well, we're going to be able to pour in all the alerts from all the different types of sources that you might have in your environment into a single platform. We're going to be able to, sit, to provide intelligence to those, and contextual intelligence to all those alerts and surface and prioritize the most critical ones to the top. So that instead of looking at 50 alerts, uh, you know, your, your security admin can say, well, these you know, five right here are marked as critical. I'm going to automatically look at those first. We're going to provide playbooks and response uh, tips to help you automate your response with best practices based on our own intelligence and our own expertise of responding to threats. We're going to give you tools to do alert and case management so that you can all manage all of that within that platform. And so where does FireEye Helix sit in that whole FireEye ecosystem? Okay, as you can see, it's very prominent in the center there. Okay, but, at, but it's help, helpful to understand, you know, what else does FireEye offer to help complement that? And we're just going back to the, you know, having many different tools types of categories. We have a lot of different tools, uh, but the good thing is, is FireEye Helix can bring all of those tools in, plus third-party tools, into one centralized organization. So at the bottom, we have our network security solution, which is our, our sensors that sit out there on your network. They're not a firewall, right? So they sit behind your firewall, sit on the network, take a look at north-south or east-west traffic. So we're looking at both you know, internet traffic as well as traffic going from machine to machine. So we can catch stuff that's going out and coming in, as well as catch maybe the threat actor trying to spread around in your environment. We have email security, which is very crucial now because I would say about 80% to 85%, depending on the statistics that you look at, of threats that come into an organization start at the email layer, right? Uh, it's usually a phishing email or some kind of a spam email that somebody clicks on and, and then they're owned. Then we have endpoint security. So we actually have agents located on the endpoints uh, where we can take a look at what's going on in the behavior of that endpoint and make a determination of this is malicious behavior, we're going to alert, we're going to notify, we're going to even, maybe even block that malicious behavior from happening. And then we have threat analytics, um, which is this little uh, add-on app to Helix, uh, which is our SIM tool. So if you, if you don't have a security event monitoring tool or security event log tool uh, in place, uh, we have FireEye Threat Analytics that can take all of those logs, bolt them in, and then send the alerts to FireEye Helix where you can do your case management, your investigative workbench, your orchestration, your central management, and your intelligence. And then finally at the top, we have our expertise. So we have our mandated services where we can do assessments, responses, advisory services. We have managed defense, which we'll, uh, I'll get into in a second, a uh, little bit in another slide, but it's basically our uh, our ability to have our mandate folks take a look at your alerts and do proactive hunting on those alerts to say, okay, well, you don't have, you know, a security analyst necessarily on staff. Well, let us be your security analysts for you. Uh, and then we have threat intelligence uh, where you can subscribe based on your vertical, based on your industry, based on your country of origin, uh, to specific threat intelligence feeds that give you intelligence about who are the bad guys and what are they do going after in your particular segment of your business. And of course, we rely on partner services like Cadre uh, to assist in all of those things. So uh, Cadre knows you guys better than we do, right? And they can help uh, you know, 
either deploy this, they can help manage this, they can help uh, with some of the alert management as well. So FireEye Helix at a glance really is all about technology, processes, and expertise in one platform, giving you that contextual awareness based on our frontline intelligence, giving you response practices codified in automation, giving you all those SOC functions in a single interface. We do three main things with FireEye Helix. We're helping to expand your visibility by prioritizing alerts, integrating with over 300 different security tools and data points, and providing contextual intelligence on top of that to help accelerate your response. So not just giving you the visibility to what's going on from an alert standpoint, but then also saying these are the ones that you need to look at first, providing pre-built playbooks so that you can automate some of those responses. We're giving you investigative tips so that even a lower level security guy or even a guy that's not too security savvy uh, can automatically start hunting within your environment and get a lot more savvy with regards to how they, how they go on in your environment. And finally, we're reducing costs by allowing you to consolidate tools and to and, and reduce the amount of pivot points, uh, giving you flexible deployment options by doing cloud, on-prem, or hybrid-based deployment models, and we're really driving efficiencies with that automation intelligence. So FireEye with threat analytics. Um, so it's important to note this, I, and I put this slide in because there's some confusion as to whether, you know, what does FireEye do what versus what does threat analytics do? So uh, FireEye Helix is a SOAR solution. So the, the, the market term is SOAR, right? Security, Operations, Automation, and Response. What that basically means is it's all about alert management, case management, bringing stuff in, applying intelligence to it, and then giving you action plans, right? That's what a SOAR solution is in a nutshell. FireEye Helix is not by itself a SIM solution. As I mentioned before, we have FireEye Threat Analytics to do event collection, log retention, you know, security analytics, compliance and reporting. All of those functionality that you might want to get expect out of a SIM solution is in our FireEye Threat Analytics, which is again that bolt-on add-on app to FireEye Helix. Then how does Helix work with our other products? So again, as our network security is a sensor that sits out there on the network, what it's doing is it's providing alerts to Helix. Helix is taking those alerts, providing technical intelligence, alert prioritization to it, automating rule books, giving you enhanced detection and alert fidelity out of those alerts that you're getting from our network security solution, combining it with our email and endpoint, for instance, and, and correlating different alerts from those three sources to say, hey, you know, we, we noticed an alert from your email and an, from your network and from your endpoint. We're putting all those together in one little readable format for you uh, so that you can take action. Uh, same thing with email and endpoint security. It's all about uh, being able to correlate and being able to automate and prioritize your uh, alerts from those sources. And then finally, our managed defense. So that layers on top of it as a service. Uh, what we do is we have analysts where we can take a look at your most critical alerts, do the proactive hunting that you might not be able to do, uh, whether it's just a time-based thing or whether it's an expertise-based thing. Uh, you might not be able to address all those critical alerts that you might see in a day. Our managed defense is there to help augment your existing security operations by doing some of that low-level work, providing you with a report with recommendations on things you should do, to either harden your environment or to uh, take action. And then, of course, if you ever need to get to the point where you have realized you've been breached and you need to do incident response, uh, we have the Mandiant team to do IR for you. All right, so enough talking about PowerPoints and stuff. Let's, uh, let's get to see this stuff in action. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and flip over to my demo environment. So I'm gonna sh just show you real quick and let me just see if I can close this somehow. Yeah, there you go, that's closed. So this is the, the FireEye Helix dashboard. Um, just so real quick, you can see that. And um, what I'm gonna do is before I, before I dive into, you know, going into an alert, doing anything like that, I'm gonna simulate an actual attack. Um, so I have spun up three different virtual machines. 
I have one called Attacker, right? It's in gray here. It's got a, a remote access tool installed on it. Um, I've already gone ahead and launched the email attacks in advance of this because I didn't want to wait three or four minutes for those, uh, those attacks to happen in a live demo environment. So just know that I've already sent the email attacks uh, to our victims. Um, and then I have two machines. I have one called Victim. Uh, this Victim machine uh, has our endpoint solution installed on it, but all the settings for prevention are turned off uh, because I, you know, it would be a, a very bad demo if I just showed it that we blocked it and then you're, you're, you're done, right? Um, whereas over here on the green one, which we call lateral, um, or victim two, um, I have the same endpoint solution installed on this, uh, but all of the settings are turned on for protection. So uh, basically we have two different victims, one blue, one green. The blue one has no protections, but just the, uh, just the watcher app installed on it basically, whereas the green has our agent installed with all the protections turned on. Uh, so I'm gonna go over to our first victim over here and I will uh, minimize some things to make this look a little bit better. Okay, so our first victim here is gonna go ahead and open up their email. And the first thing I wanna, wanna point out is that um, our email solution detected these bad emails, okay? Um, this would, again, be a very short demo if we blocked all that stuff at the email layer and it never even got down to the endpoint, right? So um, we actually sent three malicious emails uh, with this um, with this email attack. Uh, one was just one saying, hey, payment refund, uh, but we detected the malicious email through our malware protection system on our email solution and blocked that email from being hap from happening. Basically, we, we, we quarantined it. Um, here's another one that just says malware report, uh, and we blocked that based on uh, bad uh, URLs in the email. So not only did we block it, you know, we block one email based on the bad attachment, one email based on a bad URL, uh, but we allowed this one through because, again, this would be a very short demo. Uh, so this one is a very real, legit-looking email, right? So your new Google account activity report is available. You know, I'm like, I don't even know Google had an activity account activity report, but you know, I'm you know, a user, so I don't know any better. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and click on one of these these links, right? And, and obviously this, this link is a malicious link. It's going to uh, do a flash exploit and drop a loader on this machine. So, you know, to, to me, the user, I just, I just saw my screen go blank or I just saw my screen flicker a second and I'm like sitting here wondering what, what just happened. You know, I didn't, uh, I didn't do anything. Um, what I don't know is over here on the, the attacker machine, we've actually installed a remote access tool on that machine. So basically this victim machine has been, has been owned at this point. So I can go in here if I want to, I can install a key logger. I can uh, go in here and take a look at all the processes, right? I can go into file manager on that machine. So if I want to, I can go down to that local machine's desktop. And oh, there's a secrets.txt file. I wonder what that is. So I'm gonna go ahead and download that. So this is exfiltration of data off of that machine. Um, and then go ahead and open it in a folder and take a look at that. And boom, now we have all this guy's credentials for all of his other accounts, right? His Gmail account, we have his credentials for uh, acmewidgets.com, right? Uh, and his administrator password, which of course is the most secure password in the world, password one, two, three. So now we can use this as a threat actor. We can go and spread laterally. We can do all types of bad stuff. So this is an example of you know, how easy it is for somebody to gain control of a machine using known tools that are, exist on the internet. And these tools are not detectable by traditional antivirus uh, because they are not necessarily dropping any malware initially. They are just exploiting a known vulnerability on the machine, uh, AKA flash, and, and then using that as a backdoor into installing legitimately bad programs. So over here on the lateral machine, which I, as I mentioned before, has our capabilities of blocking things installed. I'm gonna go ahead and try to do that same uh, attack. So I'm gonna go into my email, same, uh, same, same email, same set of emails. Here's my Google account activity reports available. I'm gonna go ahead and maximize this so you can see it. Um, you might miss it, but you, you might see it. I'm gonna go ahead and click that link. Same link that I was in the other email. 
And as you can see here, Endpoint Security has dis discovered a suspicious activity in Internet Explorer.exe and has blocked that process from running. Uh, so if you missed it, sorry, but it did block that attack from happening. We go over to the uh, attacker machine. Uh, it is not there. So this, this, this attack was not successful on the lateral machine. Uh, but doesn't mean that the, that lateral machine is safe. It just means that, that that particular attack was not successful. Now, the one thing that we know from our experience is that a persistent threat actor, just because they're not successful once, doesn't mean they're going to keep not keep trying. So the important thing, that, and the reason why I show this demo is to to illustrate that you know nobody's endpoint protection is going to be 100% effective. Nobody's email protection is going to be 100% effective. Uh, nobody's network protection is going to be 100 percent effective right if anybody tells you you know that we're 100 percent going to block everything in your environment that's malicious um, they're feeding you a line uh, what we're doing at fireeye is we're giving you tools uh, to help identify when something has been successful uh, from an attack perspective and how do you respond to that so that's an important question to, to ask of all these other tools that you might be looking at or um, or having in, in your environment is Okay, well, you know, what if your product does not detect stuff? How do you give me uh, the, the tools to do investigations and, and, and figure out what's going on in my environment? So here again is our, um, our dashboard summary. Here's our, our Helix console. Um, as we can see, right off the bat, we have a, a summary dashboard. We have a number of different dashboards you can create. You can do your own custom ones if you want. Uh, so you can, if you if you know what you're doing in here, if, if you want to explore the different contexts and stuff like that, you can go ahead and do that. Uh, we have an operational dashboard that just kind of shows you things like system health, right? Uh, shows you how many events per second we're taking into this solution right now, about 322 events per second. How is that trending over time? Uh, the sensors and how they're running. Three three sensors are running okay. Uh, so in our environment, we have host protection connected. Um, so everything is running well in this environment. Go back to the summary. Uh, we can see a number of different critical alerts right here. We can see uncontained cases. We can get an idea of our events per second. Again, uh, daily high, 27, 28 million events that we're getting. Now, obviously, this is a demo environment, uh, so we're, we're pushing a lot of data through it uh, to show you this. Uh, but then more importantly, so I want to I want to point this out. Look at all the different sources that we're pulling information from. So it's not just FireEye products, right? So FireEye's here, uh, Mandiant's here, right? We're, we're pulling in information from Bro. We're pulling information from Cisco. We're pulling information in uh, from Shibboleth. We're pulling information in from from F5, right? So we're pulling information from a number of different sources. Um, from Microsoft, right? Big one that we would want to pull in from, from Unix, right? So we're pulling in information from a lot of different sources and we're aggregating all of that, applying our intelligence onto it to make sure that the alerts that matter are bubbled up to the top here of the summary dashboard. Now, if I'm going to do an investigation, I want to take a look at all alerts, that's fine. And what we're going to see here is we're going to see a number of different alerts, see how this says infection match, right, uh, malware objects, these are low criticality, very low criticality, the reason why is because they were blocked and there was no reason to uh, really be aware of or be, be alarmed by that anymore. But the cool thing is, is if I wanted to, I can take a look at all the critical alerts from this site just by filtering and going in, just taking all the low and medium out, I can now see all my critical and high alerts, okay? So taking a look at this one right here, malware callback, we can see here's the raw event data. If we wanted to, we could search on that. We can say, hey, look at what's the uh, destination IP of address. We could do a new search based on that and see what happened on that destination IP address. An easier way to do it, so like you're not saying you're not an expert at looking at this, it looks like the matrix to most people, right? Um, this is where our investigative tips really come into hand, handy. So this is our investigative tips. And what this allows us to do is this allows us to ask a number of different questions that our own incident responders would be asking in a scenario like this. If they were greeted with this type of an alert, what type of things would I wanna know, right? Were there any other rules or alerts that fired from this source IP? Uh, if I expand that query, it runs that query. And we can see here, look at that. We almost have a timeline of what happened, right? Web infection, 
malware object dropped, uh, portable executable file transfer, that's what that means, using SMB technology or methodology, right? So, so lateral movement, malware callback, infection match. So malware callback is the, uh, the alert that we're looking at right now here. And what does that mean? This is activity that matches a malware command and control signature that we have. So we know, you know, bad, bad sites. We know bad places that people like to call back to for command and control. Uh, we alerted on that. We know that. We give you this intelligence and this, this information up front so that you can make a determination of whether this is truly critical or whether this is something that can wait till later. So that's our investigative tips and there's a number of different things that we might want to know like uh, you know, what other hosts were found with the same threat in the last 24 hours. We run that search and we can see here's a whole bunch of different ones. Now this is a demo environment so we're running a whole bunch of demos all the time but this will be a good indicator of, of saying well okay well maybe this is spread laterally or maybe a whole bunch of people got the same email and all made the same mistake right all made that same click. You know, what other hosts actually connected to that host? Here we can see, here's all, and when somebody's connecting back to a command and control host, you know that they've been compromised. So now we can see that this is spread out to an environment. Uh, this is not good. All right, some of these have reached out 14 times, you know, 12 times to that host. So investigative tips, in a nutshell, what it allows us to do is take a, a guy that might not be totally 100% savvy on security, and automatically arm them with tools and tips to help do an investigation, uh, get a little bit further, uh, really to make that determination of has that machine been compromised and, and where did it start and where did it spread to. But even better than that is our intelligence. So if we flip over to the intel field here, all right, we could see that we have uh, the different uh, indicators of compromise that we've tracked on this particular alert and that we've correlated from other sources, whether from network or email or endpoint or from Bro or from Cisco or from wherever. And we could take a look at, uh, you know, the blue dot will say, you know, this is benign, it's malware, uh, we know about it, but we blocked it, right, which is fine. Uh, but over here we have a red, which is malicious. And not only is it malicious, but we know exactly who this is. This is the UPS group, AKA our internal designation is APT3 which is a China-based cyber espionage actor, and here's what they like to do. They like to steal your stuff. They like to steal your intellectual property. Uh, they've been in business since 2010. They target the U.S. They target a number of U.S. government agencies and uh, in th these particular sectors. So if you're not in one of these sectors, you have to think about, well, why are they in here, right? Well, do you do business with one of these sectors is a good question to ask. Right. Um, but then we can we can give you get more information about them if we wanted to dive into our intelligence portal and, and go from there. The next biggest thing I want to talk about is our automation capabilities. So we talked about automation. We talked about how we have the ability to go ahead and do, uh, you know, so automate some specific things. So right here from this console, we could go into the the endpoint and request containment of that machine. So that's you know, an, an important part of it is not only do we have the ability to, you know, look at the alert, triage it immediately. So remember how I mentioned 20 minutes to triage an alert? Well, we saw that it was critical right off the bat. That that basically took it from a 20-minute triage to a, a one-minute triage, basically, at that point, right? We took a look at it. We determined that it was bad. Uh, we've triaged that alert already for you, so you don't have to spend that 20 minutes just to see if that's something that's critical or not. And then we gone into investigation and found that, you know, hey, not only did what this was this a, a bad thing, uh, but it also spread around. Um, obviously, the response to this would be we want to contain that host. We want to contain all the other hosts that may have been you know, targeted by this. And we want to do an instant response to see where else that person may have spread. So that's an, obviously an accelerated case uh, of how you would use this tool. Um, the other cool things is you can assign this to people, uh, assign this to users, assign this to yourself. Uh, you can mark it as a true positive or a false positive in our system so that it doesn't show up again if it's a false positive. Or you can create a new case and then do case management from there uh, to you know, assign that to a particular level two guy or something like that for that, that next step, which is you know, containment of that machine, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So that being said, um, that is my demo. And I will go ahead and go into, where is it? 
Let's go into chat, see if there's any questions in the chat. So we'll go ahead and, uh, you know, if, if you want to go ahead, Kristen, and, and you can unmute people. If, if, if everybody has a question, uh, you want to ask that question, we're available for questions. Yes, sir. If you have any questions, please enter them in the chat box. Well, so and so the next steps here really for, for us and, and for you, uh, if this looks interesting, if this looks like something that you'd like to kick the tires on, uh, talk to your cadre sales rep. We have uh, several people at cadre that are certified on this technology. They know how this stuff works. Uh, they have a great support structure in place with by myself and others within our organization. Uh, we'd be happy to show how this could work in your environment um, and, and how this could work with your existing tools. Uh, so, uh, you know, feel free to reach out, let them know if you have any questions or if you, if you just don't want to put it into the chat or have it answered live, uh, we'll have plenty of uh, opportunity to engage on that later. Great. Thank you, Dan. Um, so we are recording this webinar and we'll be posting it on our website, but if there are no further questions, um, we'll go ahead and end the session. Thank you all for attending and we hope you have a great day. Thank you.